sprites. In an earlier video, where I covered how to boot the machine, I didn't clear out the sprites. So this video, it's time to talk about sprites and the design decisions that impact how to use them. Sprites are also sometimes called movable objects or mobs, in contrast to glitter objects, bobs, or just objects. For this video, I will always use sprites. Sprites are set up by 512 bytes, followed by 32 bytes of overflow bits. Thus, we have 4 bytes and 2 bits per sprite, for a total of 128 sprites. The two overflow bits represent size and the ninth bit of the X position. Yes, the SNES has 9-bit math. Oh, joy! Luckily, it also has 16-bit accumulators, so not so bad this time. In this case, however, the X is signed, so setting the ninth bit makes the numbers negative. So 0 to 256 on the visible screen, and then to minus 63 to make it appear from the left side. Y is normally 224 lines high, so no need for 9 bits. As you can just use the negative space left, i.e. think of it as minus 32 to 224, or minus 17 to 239. Zero, 00 is the top left of the screen, so if you knit all 128 sprites to be 00, zero you will overflow on the top by however many pixels high your smaller sprite height is, which is bad. You can only have 32 sprites on a line. So we want to place all the unused sprites off the screen. So y equals 224. And I recommend an x of minus 32, as that just so happens to be 224 with the ninth bit set. Thus, you don't have to worry about dropout on your screen. Also, you may notice there's only 32 lines to hide, so 64 sprites are annoying, and that if you put them off the bottom of the screen, it will cause you to run over on the top of the screen. If you are new to the SNES, I recommend avoiding 64 size sprites, they will only cause you pain. If you do use them, ensure you always have them entirely on screen. And to be sure to always set unused sprites to the smaller size you can, and never 64. In order to move and allocate your sprites, you will need a RAM mirror of sprites, which you then DMA to OAM every frame. OAM is Object Attribute Memory, which holds the X, Y, Tile ID, and a collection of attributes, H or V flip, priority, and palette number. Then the upper bits determine which size and the ninth X bit. Note that due to the bit order, the leftmost bit is zero, so sprites move in the opposite way in the upper bits, like so. We allocate 512 bytes and 32 bytes for the upper bits. I'm going to put it in shared WRAM. To DMA, we simply set up a write one byte DMA to 2104 from our mirror and do it for all hex 220 bytes. This only works if your upper bits directly follows your main bytes. A reason why this would not be the case, I will show later. Note, I have used DMA channel one, not zero for this. This is because I need to set the length to two and so I save two bytes and two clocks by using it to trigger the DMA channel. To clear OAM, i.e. set all sprites off screen, we need to do two DMAs, one to set the lower bytes and one to set the upper bits. This is done on the mirror and not OAM, so when you first boot the machine, be sure to clear the mirrors and then do an OAM upload. So a fixed byte to the WRAM port. The sprite empty value, which is 224, note again I'm using DMA channel 1. Set the test WRAM port to be OAM mirror, and we're doing 512 bytes, and trigger. Now the upper bits. We still want a fixed byte to WRAM. We set the upper source byte, in this case $55, i.e. all small and minus x. We write 32 bytes. If you don't have OAM mirror high directly after OAM mirror, 
you will need to adjust the WRAM port. And then we fire the DMA. In this case, A still holds 2, so no need to reload it. Sprites have up to 512 tiles and are always 16 color. Thus you only have 16 kilobytes for sprite data. However, there is a split mode, where you can offset the upper 256 tiles into 4 banks. So you have 256 fixed sprites, and then you have 4 banks of 256 tiles that you can get 4 frames of animation from. A rather NES-like construction, that eats 48k. I don't actually know of any games that use this configuration, if you do, please let me know in a comment as I'd like to have a look at them. Typical sprite flow in most SNES games. You have your list of sprites you want conceptually. So this is animation num, plus frame num, and base x and y, plus flipped or any other priority settings, palette offsets, as per your engine's need. Each conceptual sprite will probably, in the extremely common case, be made up of multiple physical sprites. These are called bolted sprites or meta sprites. For example, in Super Mario World, Mario is made up of two 16 by 16 sprites. As is Yoshi and the Coopers. The tongue is five 8 by 8 sprites. In Super Street Fighter 2, Ryu is made up of 9 16x16 16 16 and 2 8x8. 8 8. While Chung Li is 8 16x16 16 16 and 2 8x8 8 8 sprites. Ryu's shadow is 6 8x8, eight as is Chung Li's. So each frame will be stored as a collection of X delta, Y delta, relative to a common anchor, tile number, pallet delta, or abs depending upon your needs. Possibly also have a priority baked in, again, depends upon your needs and size. You can keep a rolling delta if you wish, so rather than original plus delta, you can do prev plus delta, depends on how your code is written. So each frame, Update all conceptual sprites based upon their internal logic. Move all conceptual sprites by scrolling deltas. Clear the OAM mirror. Walk through your conceptual sprites and then build the actual sprites from its X and Y plus the delta per sub sprite and write the bytes into the mirror. Then in vblank, DMA OAM and start again. This may seem excessive, however, you'll be changing the frames often. And when you scroll your screen, you will need to update the sprite positions to match anyway. You may also have some dynamic sprite tiles. For example, if we look at Mario World again, you can see that Mario and Yoshi are dynamic. The data for the current frame is DMA'd in as needed. This allows Mario and Yoshi to have a large amount of animations, while everything else in the level has their tiles already in VRAM, statically. This is why the Coopers only have two frames. While Street Fighter, all the fighter sprites are dynamically and fully uploaded each frame. When you build your full frames, you might also need to encode DMA information to add to a VRAM update list. How much is dynamic and how much is static depends on your game and its needs. Sprite flipping. Sometimes you can just keep the same sprite layer and flip the sprite. For example, Mario and Yoshi can just be H-flipped. However, if we do this to the Yoshi sprite, oh dear. This is because the head is offset by minus nine from the left edge anchor point, but if we mirror the X delta as well, it works. However, if the anchor is in the middle of Yoshi's feet, then it's minus 15 for the left and two for the right, which can't just be flipped. Likewise, with vertical flipping, if your engine needs it, a few coding tips to help you on your journey. Remember that the X is 9 bits, unless you have a world that ensures everything is always on screen. You will have to handle the 9th bit. So when you do your math, be sure to sign extend. To sign extend, you need to set the upper 8 bits based upon the 7th bit. So LDA value, compared to as 80, BCC, positive. If you're still here, we are now negative. 
so we OR the upper bits to FF and branch over. For positive, we END the lower bits with FF to be sure. For speed, you might want to store all the sprite info in 16-bit X values, but that can eat space fast, so you need to strike a balance. When you flip the X, you can either branch and do an SPC rather than an ADC, or you can negate the value. To do a negation, you EOR FF FF, and then add one. To flip the bits in the attribute bytes, you can use EOR to toggle the sixth and or seventh bits. If you want to offset the palette number or priority, you can still add the number, just make sure the number you want to add is pre-shifted. I.e. to add one to the palette, you add two. Just be sure not to overflow. How to deal with the upper two bits. Keep a separate index, and then when you get to the ninth bit, which if you have a 16-bit value, you right shift the lower bit into C, then raw that bit into the upper byte. Then later, LSR raw the size bit, after doing 4 sprites, move to the next byte. If you're doing 9 bits with the C flag, then you just roll. When you finish, you will have to round up to the next multiple of 4, and shift in 1, then 0, until the byte is full. Now, beginners, stop here. For those of you who wish to do this with swag, carry on. Now, the absolute best in class way to do this is to abuse how the 65816 can walk through multiple address spaces. For this to work, your OAM mirror and sprite list must be in the shared memory area, and the sprite list must be higher than the OAM upper bit mirror. So you set your stack to be at the top of the main bytes of the OAM mirror. You then set the DP to be the upper bits. Then you set the data bank to point to the bank that holds your sprite definitions. This is the reverse stack sprite allocator. So you look up the sprite you want and you get the base address for it in the data bank. Store this in Y for example. And read any flags you need. Flipped, PAL offset, etc. by using DP relative indexing with a 16-bit index. Read the base X. So you index into your data bank, i.e. abs plus y, to read the x delta, and then add to your base to x, then push. Roll, up a bit into dp0, thus we don't need an index anymore. Read the y delta, add y, push. Read the tile num, push. Read the flags, adjust as needed, push. Read size, roll up a bit into dp, if you have done 4, ink the DP pointer. Yes, it not being page aligned costs you a clock, but it spares you index register reloads, so it's faster. Repeat until done. Now you have the OM bytes all set up. But it is backwards, right? Well, the DMA engine does have a decrement option. So you do a backwards DMA to the port, which is always forwards. Thus, it reverses the bytes for free. Then you do a forward DMA for the upper bits. Then restore your stack, DP, data bank, etc. For bonus points, store the conceptual sprite positions and flags as struct of arrays to minimize any index adjustments. See you next time.